right, so now that we received our coffee, we acknowledge that we had some freight expenses, right? Because for period for a periodic inventory, right, we recognize them as purchase expense and freight expense, right? They have to be separate. Um, even though we do include it as uh together for inventory, right? But that's not until we actually transfer it over into inventory at the end of the accounting period, right? Because when we're looking at periodic inventory, we're not caring to keep track of it when we sell our products. We only care to keep track of whether we purchased, returned, or got a discount on it. But when it comes to perpetual inventory, we have to remember that rule of thumb. Wherever, in, wherever we recognize that we have perpetual inventory, everything goes into inventory, including all costs that are included that is part of inventory. So that's what we did. We included the freight here as part of inventory, right? And we just plugged our numbers into our inventory worksheet, okay? So now we can go ahead and move on. It is now Thursday, the th uh, 13th of June. So we are on a new, brand new day. And it is time to hire Silver State Electrical to upgrade the electrical wiring, okay? So why do we need to upgrade electrical wiring? You guys remember? Yep, we got a grinder that needs extra power. Yes, correct. Now in this case, do I need to journalize this transaction? They haven't done anything for us yet. Yes, all we did was hire them, right? They haven't billed us that they completed the work. We just hired them. So at least we know that the electrical wiring is being handled for the coffee grinder. So then we also end up receiving a bill from LV Remodeling Company, right? Here's this, the bill. This time it's bill number 1760, right? It's issued on the 13th and due on the 17th, so another four days. And this time we got billed for the reinforcement for the foundation for the coffee grinder for 1560. So we're getting billed for LV remodeling, but this time it's for the foundation for the coffee grinder. So what do we do with this? How do we journalize this transaction? That money goes into the miscellaneous expense account. Correct, because this is going okay. to be <laughs> part of the cost of the coffee grinder, right? Because this, right, it's not a subcontractor expense, right? We would have assumed if, if we didn't know it was for the coffee grinder, right? This would have been an exceptional way to say, okay, I assume because we hired LV Remodeling before and what they did was some subcontractor some work. In this case, we hired them specifically to do a job that is specifically dedicated to help us put our grinder in service. So in this case, this is going to be considered part of the cost of the grinder, right? Because if, if I were to build that reinforcement and let's say I don't put the grinder on there, then what is it built for? then that will be a subcontractor expense because that will be universal to everything. But this case, this foundation was designated specifically for this grinder. So this is going to be correct. Part of the car cost of the grinder, which we placed it into miscellaneous suspense. So in this case, that is correct, right? That is exactly where my coffee grinder is currently located. It is currently located in miscellaneous suspense. Now, what? It goes on account, so that's the credit. Yep, for fifteen sixty. All right, we're gonna put it on an account. Okay, so we have all the information we need. Right, we got, we received a bill from LV Remodeling Company. Proof of the transaction was? 1760. Invoice number 1760. How many days do we have to pay for this? Four. Four days. And what was this miscellaneous suspense for? Just um, 
for him to get foundation. Mm-hmm. Reinforcement found station with blinder. Okay. This one needs specific information because we're just dumping it in a random account, but we don't know what it is for. Now, this one needs more detail um, that this was because we put a reinforcement for the grinder. Excellent. So now that we have that, right, we have everything we need. We don't need to go to our journal. It's not a purchase order, purchase expense or anything like that. We need to now go to our ledger. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and drop down to our miscellaneous suspense account, the all the way at the bottom here. Here we are, miscellaneous suspense. And I'm going to go ahead and add that reinforcement foundation for grinder. Which cost me fifteen sixty. Fifteen sixty. That's gonna be added to the price of the coffee grinder. So right now, what is my current account balance in my miscellaneous suspense? Two thousand eighty-eight oh seven. Three thousand eighty-eight oh seven. Okay, because we got the five. We got the two fives. Two fives made that a three, but I did the same exact mistake too. Okay. All right, three thousand eighty-eight dollars and seven cents is what my current coffee grinder is costing it, right? Because in this case, remember from yesterday's lesson when we dropped our coffee grinder and coffee brewer into this miscellaneous suspense account once we said okay well i don't have extra work to be done for the coffee brewer we took it out so that means all that there was left was my coffee grinder so therefore i added this extra uh re uh, the reinforcement of the foundation so now my coffee grinder is currently outstanding at three thousand eighty eight dollars and seven cents all we have left is the electrical wiring okay so then we also placed it on in an account, so we need to go to accounts payable. Today is the 12th. This was invoice number 1760. Still on general journal page four. Let me go ahead and double check. Yeah, I still got, I still got a couple transactions I can put in there. Okay. And now I increased the amount that I owe by 1560. All right. So therefore, I now currently owe $15,676.40. Which once again, that is a lot of money we owe to people. So now that my journal, my ledger is done, I now need to log into my subsidiary ledger because I owe LV Remodeling more money. So I definitely need to keep record of that. Oh, here's LV Remodeling Company. Today's the 13th. We put, we hired them to do the reinforcement Foundation for grinder. Okay, seventeen sixty. Still page general journal four. We still have the same exact um, net here, but when is my actual due date? Right, we know that because it's on the bill itself, the seventeenth of June. Okay, and it's for fifteen and sixty dollars. So therefore, let's go ahead and just drag this all the way out. Now that I owe this extra bill here, I owe LV in grand total $3,450. $3,450. Okay, just to LV remodeling. Okay, but here's what we can do. See, now that we 
are on the subsidy ledger, I know for this fact. Well, my first bill that I received from LV Remodeling is due on the 15th. So that's coming up soon, right? Right now, today's only the 13th. That's something that we have to keep a, a lookout for, that that bill is due is coming up due soon. You can skim through your other your other vendors that you owe as well to see if you have any due dates that are coming up soon. So this one's due on the 22nd. So we still have time there. 22nd and 23rd. So we have time there. And of course you can highlight them however you'd like if it makes it easier for you. You can if you um, know the advanced tools to be able to flag you down when you paid it or something like that so go ahead and do that if you know how to uh, but for now that's like the only bill that is coming up right around the corner okay and that's it because we didn't deal with inventory so we recorded our bill so now we can go ahead and move on So then we end up gotten we end up getting in contact with Higher Temps, okay, which is a temporary health agency. And what we had them do is we requested them to hire us a temporary worker, right? So today's date, right? So this is the contract number 36515. And what we want them to do is to have them start on the 17th and finish the job on the 19th right we definitely need one extra worker to work for 24 hours okay so we want them to work eight hours for three days straight okay right from the 17th to the 19th right 17 18 19 that's three days um they're gonna work for a total of 24 hours so eight out eight hours per day right one worker and we're gonna pay them 15 dollars per hour okay which is gonna give us a total of $360. So this is the contract. Now, it says here that the date that we've requested this is going to be on the 13th. The due date to pay this person is going to be, or in this case, we don't pay them, we're gonna pay the company higher temps, is going to be the 21st. So a couple days after the actual date of their um, job to be completed by, which is the 19th, a couple days later, we need to pay them for um, this bill. So in this case, what do I do with this information? Well, it's a temporary payroll expense, but it's going to a vendor, so you put it under which one? It would be under the temporary payroll, right? The temporary, temporary the temporary labor expense, correct. Is so? Is that what is that what you want to do? You want to put it on the temporary labor expense? That would seem to me like you guys put your input in. It, because that's where I would put it and then put it on accounts payable and put it under the vendor name of higher temp. But Okay, I see what you did there, okay? And that is actually, if you want to do it that way, that's actually can be correct. Right? Because you signed a contract, right? Yeah. But... Okay, you signed the contract to have somebody come out. What if this person did not show up? Uh, what if they couldn't, what if that person decided to call in sick for one of those days last minute and they couldn't find someone else to do the job? That one I don't have any idea because it would be in a temporary situation until they had completed the work right this contract only tells them what i'm looking for and what i'm asking for right now here's the question has the job been done no 
No, so technically you wouldn't be able to put this under an accounts payable because the job hasn't even been completed yet. So it would go under subsidiary right now, right? Yes, in this case, there's no transaction necessary because first off, the job has not been completed yet. So we cannot technically bill ourselves for a job that has not been done yet, okay? And second of all, we have a due date. So are we obligated to pay now? No. Can we wait till the 21st? Yes. And that way we confirmed whether this one person did show up for all three days like the contract outlined, right? And did they clock in for all 24 hours? If they did not, then I would have to call that agency and say, hey, this person didn't show up. So I'm only going to pay you X amount of um, dollars because I asked you to find me a worker to work for that day and they didn't show up. So there's a lot of things when it comes to this, right? Because he, there's, again, all those conditions I just said, right? Well, first yeah. off, the job hasn't even been completed yet. Yeah, it's a future expense. I forgot Correct. About it's a future expense. And there's a second condition. Are they going to show up? Because if, if they don't show up, this contract is breached. Right. So in this case... We are going to hold off until we see this person and make a record whether they have came in or not. And then we will pay the company however we paid them because we went to them to find that person to help us temporarily work at our, our location for, for the time being. Maybe we need them to be like someone who's going to run back and forth uh, to carry the supplies out to the Bartista. Okay? Or something okay so in this case what we can do with this information is put it into our subsidiary ledger because it is a future expense we did sign the contract as of today but that's all we did we only signed a contract no transaction was made no payment was made no bill was was issued the job has not been done so therefore that's all we did we only signed the contract validating what I want from this company. And once the service has been completed, so officially on the 19th is when they can bill us saying, hey, don't forget, you owe me money. Then we can go ahead and cut them a check and whether it was correct or not. So in this case, one thing that we can do is we can plug all this information into our actual subsidiary ledger because technically, yes, we, we signed the contract, so we have all the information in case everything does go through, then everything goes through. So here they are, right here, hire attempts is already here, okay? So today is the 13th when we signed the contract, all right? So notes is going to be hi, um, hire one worker. For three days, um, eight hours per day, okay, at a rate of $15 per hour. Okay, that's all we did. That's all we contracted that person for. And what was my contract number? 36515. Post reference, right? was the fourth terms in this case um you can put terms because in this case it is due on the 21st so whatever 13 i think it would be due in net eight days is it right so in this case it's going to be due on the 21st and we know what that amount is. It's for $360. Now, did we pay for it? No. Okay? But in this case, this contract can change because, again, we have to make sure, did that person come in and clock in all 24 hours? If they did not, then we would have to adjust this and revise this contract to make it, um, we only pay for what we, we, we received, right? So in this case, we, we do technically owe 
hire Temp's money. However, they haven't completed the job yet, so we can't journalize it because no real transaction has happened, like we mentioned, right? This is only us signing a contract that, okay, if this does go through, then we owe them $360. Yes. So we are not putting on journal, but we are putting the difference number of journal page four? Yes, because we signed the contract on, on page four. Oh, okay. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Okay, I see what you mean. Yeah, you're right. Sorry. Um, in this case, no, no journal. Okay. Just the date. Okay. Um, and again, formula is going to be your invoice amount minus prepaid minus uh, returns minus discounts minus payments. In this case, we owe... Higher terms, $360 if this contract goes through. But like I mentioned, if the person fails to show up, then we would have to adjust the contract accordingly um, and pay for what we received. Okay. So in this case, if we end up getting, if the person did not show up, then we would put a refund in there and only pay what for what we, we owe. Okay. So in this case, there you go. Awesome. Okay. Okay. So let's see what happened next. So we end up going to restaurant supplies. Okay. And we end up buying. Oh, actually, no, we end up receiving, excuse me. We end up receiving from Restaurant Supplies our refrigerator, right? Today is June 14th. We received our refrigerator, right? Here's our bill, right? It shipped to us. The tax was 8.25%, which was $247. We got shipping costs of $250 because it's a really large refrigerator and so the total amount due is three thousand four hundred and ninety five dollars and thirty four cents so in this case we also got terms we're given an opportunity to get a one percent discount if we pay within 15 days if not the entire bill is due in 30 days so in this case what do we do with this transaction Today's the 14 now. Since there is no um, extra work to do to put this fridge in the service. Okay. So we just put it in the... Um, Asset account. Okay, look. Okay, do we have a refrigerator account? Yeah, it's 15030. Good. One. No, hold on. 15030 is our refrigerator. Yes. So we do have and a then, refrigerator account. Okay. And then we also want to put it in the um, account payable. Because we have 15 days to pay. Yes, and we're extremely low on money. Yes. Okay. okay. And how much do I owe? The total of $3,495.34. Three, four, four. Okay. Ooh. Typo once again, three, four, nine, five, three, four. There you go. Okay, we have all the information we need, such as, right, we received a bill from Restaurant Supplies. Right? 
invoice number or yeah invoice number zero zero two zero three two okay how many days do we have to pay on this uh, 15 days Fifth. with one percent discount so a one percent 15 net 30. Okay. All right. Looks good. Everything's there. So let's go ahead and plug it in to my subsidiary. I'm sorry, my ledger first and then subsidiary. Okay, so refrigerator is an asset. Oh, no, I was there. I said copy brewer. Here's the refrigerator. Okay. Today's the 14. Okay. Let's take a look at the detailing on the refrigerator, right? Refrigerator cost me $2,998. And we got charged $247.34. Two nine nine eight plus eight point two five percent tax, which was two hundred and forty seven dollars in how many cents? Thirty four cents. Okay, plus two hundred fifty dollars shipping. We are still on our general journal, page four, very close to the bottom of it, for $3,495.34. And once again, we need to put this onto our accounts payable. Oh, well, hold on, hold on. Did I put 34? Yes, 34 cents. All right, so I got to go to my accounts payable now because now I owe even more money. With the invoice number 002032. General Journal page four. And we owe another whopping $3,495.34, bringing up our grand total to $19,171.74. Okay? Again, a lot, a lot, a lot of money we owe already. Okay? So that means we got to start opening up our business so we can generate that money to start paying our vendors off and back slowly. Okay. So there you go. Plugged in my numbers into the journal and into my ledger. So next I got to do is plug into my subsidiary ledger. Okay. So let's go ahead and identify my restaurant supplies here. Okay. Here's my restaurant supplies. Today is the 14, right? We purchased a refrigerator. Okay, so why is it that when I went to the store, I was able to put this to put my cash register on an account, but not my refrigerator? It's possible you went over your account balance, so they didn't allow it. So that's why they decide, sorry, unfortunately, you didn't get approved of a line credit high enough to cover both of those 
um, charges. So the second one, the second charge that you made, unfortunately, you would we would just have to bill you regularly. You cannot put it on an account and finance it. So in this case, all right, it is what it is. All right. So in this case, we're gonna go ahead and recognize that we purchased a refrigerator. Okay. And we got it on invoice number. Zero zero two zero three two. Okay. And once again, general journal page four. And do we have terms? Yes, we got a one percent fifteen net thirty. So in this case, because we couldn't finance it, right? we were at least able to take advantage of a discount if we pay them back sooner than later, all right? So that was an agreement that they allowed us to have is, well, even though we couldn't let you finance it, we will, all, we will go ahead and let you um, have the opportunity to get a discount on this item, okay? So what is the due date on this item? Or in this case, what's the discount due date? The first one is June 29th. Okay, and then? Absolute 30 days, July 14th. Good. All right. For $3,495.34 is what I owe restaurant supplies. Okay. So right now, I owe restaurant supplies $4,147. Okay. I can't see it. Okay. For $1,144.00. 83 cents. Okay, so no bueno for my restaurant supplies account. Okay. All right. So again, this isn't part of inventory. So this is not going to be, um, I don't need to use my inventory worksheet. Okay, so we plugged it into our journal, plugged into our ledger, and we plugged it into my subsidiary ledger. Okay, so let's go ahead and do this one last transaction, and then we'll call it a day. Okay, so in this case, right, right here, we have to pick up our advertising flyers from City Printers. So here's our invoice that we originally had to begin with, right? This time, because we owed the $50, we're going to make a payment for that $50 using our business credit card. We're going to pay the rest of the amount with our business credit card. So what does that mean? So we repeat what we just did with the down payment for that flyer. No, it, we oh, cannot yeah. repeat it because we already made the down payment. We're not making another down payment. Oh, so um, instead of a prepaid account, okay, we are putting in advertising expense. Yes, because we're picking up the flyer. So in this case, we are picking up our advertising flyers, right? We actually acquired all 2,000 flyers in our hands, okay? And then, um, and then we are paying with a visa. So we will put it, the amount in the visa payable. Okay. But then we also wanna bring that prepaid account Yes, because this, we're going to apply the down payment to the bill. Yeah. 
to the bill. Okay, so in this case, right, how much was my down payment know. for? A uh, down payment was $50. What was the total amount I paid on my credit card? Was another $50. So therefore, how much advertising in my... The sewing by soda was $100. You bought $100 worth of advertising expense. Good. So we have everything that we need in the information here, right? Right? We picked up our, our flyers from City Printers, right? What was the proof of my transaction? It's a uh, order number. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. And then it's the flyers. Okay, so in this case, I'm going to put a note here that I picked up 2,000 flyers yeah. and paid remaining balance. Yeah. Okay. Good. So now, what do we need to do now? go to the um, ledgers mm -hmm. and then we need to update the prepaid account. Oh, you want to start there first? Oh, no, but we can put it, we will do the order. So we'll start with the advertising expense. Okay. okay. Advertising expense, right? How many, what do we do? We picked up 2,000 flyers. Still on page four, where we actually reached the end of page four here for a hundred dollars. So, what is my total amount of advertising expense I've paid so far? Oh, I guess I revealed the answer 185. <laughs> right, 100 plus the 85 that we purchased for the newspaper ad gave us a total of 185 dollars. We're going to apply my prepayment or my down payment here. Let me look at it. There it is. Applied down pay on flyers, right? And you could put order number seven four four one three six okay still on page four and that's going to decrease your your prepaid accounts for that fifty dollars we're bringing you back down to the same account balance of the six six five four seventeen and last but not least we need to charge our credit card because that's exactly what we did right we end up using our credit card to pay the remaining balance. So in this case, you could say, um, uh, you could do the same thing. Picked up 2,000 flyers, paid remaining balance. For the fifty dollars, so therefore, you also charged your card a total of one hundred and eighty-five dollars as well. Okay. So then, what else happened? Or then, then we have to go to my subsidiary ledger because now I actually paid city printers, right? So I go to find city printers.
There you go, city printers. Same thing here, we picked up four, uh, sorry, 2,000 flyers. Okay, 50, oh wait, uh, flyers. Applied, down, pay, and um, paid remaining balance with the visa. Okay. So again, it was seven four four one three six. Oops, seven four four one three six. Right, still on general journal page four. Um, no terms because we paid at time of service. But this is what we gotta do. We gotta apply the invoice, or uh, I'm sorry, apply the prepaid. The invoice was originally for a hundred dollars. And because we paid with the Visa credit card, we paid with the $50. So therefore, I owe city printers nothing. And this actually reflects what the bill told me, right? That the bill was originally $100. I already made the down payment, so I owed $50. And I paid that $50 remaining balance um, off with the, my Visa credit card. Okay. All right, everybody good so far? Yep. Okay, so that's gonna be it for today. Well, actually, hold on. We have, we received a purchase order, right? So let me, let's go ahead and update my purchase order real quick because finally we received my refrigerator right and that's all that we have so far pending in our purchase orders okay so again the date was the 14 right and it was uh invoice number Zero, zero, two, oh, wait, 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 yeah, two, three, two, right, for my refrigerator. But the purchase order, we didn't have a purchase order for the flyers, so. Invoice three, two. Okay, but we didn't have a, a purchase order for, uh, for my flyers. So that was something that we forgot to do to ensure that we have received my um, refrigerator. Okay. And we just paid off my uh, flyers and received all 2,000 flyers. So now we got to distribute them all over the place. Okay, so there you go. So we're going to stop here for today. When we come back tomorrow, we will finish off the rest of Coffee Cafe week two. Okay. So I shall be uploading Coffee Cafe material for week three. All right. Um, so we might start, actually, we will start uh, week three um, tomorrow. 